welcome back to my channel, Holly and Ash Tarot. For those of you who do not know, my name is Ash and my spirit guide's name is Holly. Today, um, we are going to be doing another fan fiction reading. I don't know if anybody else is having like, like a lie, like, ugh, just like a hard life. <laughs> um, but I was like, you know what? We need to do something fun. We need to do something fun because like shit's been going like, you know, life has been lifing. Um, so let's do something fun today. Let's do something lighthearted today. And I thought today we could do uh, your first date with them, your first date with your favorite character. Okay. Pick a character in your mind, envision them, envision how handsome or beautiful they are, what you like about them. Um, you know, if you like Kakashi from Naruto, if you like Thranduil's big chest, whatever it may be, <laughs> um, you know, picture them and picture uh, going on a date with them and kind of getting those vibes, okay? So while you're in, sitting in those vibes, we have three piles to choose from today and I will give each one a crystal, okay? So number one is going to be Ladybug. And I think the crystal I'm going to put with number one today is going to be Clear Quartz. Number two, we have the Sunflower. And with the Sunflower today, I actually want to do Fluorite. Number three is the Clover. And with number three, I want to do citrine. I'm going to pick with you guys today. Um, who am I going to pick? All right. I just got finished watching The Witcher, so I'm going to do Gerald. <laughs> I'm a little too grown to be doing this, but you know, it's it's whatever. I love this stuff. Um, okay, switch one. I'm going to pick. Okay. Alrighty guys, I have my pile picked out. I'm going to give you guys a second to pick yours and um, please feel free to pause the video if you need some more time. Alrighty, we're going to get started with pile number one, which happens to be the ladybug. Uh, so please go back a little bit and pick your pile if you're still not ready, but we're gonna get started. Hello, hello, my pile number one people. Um, my camera is kind of struggling to focus today, so I apologize if anything gets blurry at any time. Um, so whoever picked the clear quartz and the ladybug, this reading is for you. Um, I do just want to say before we get started that I do offer personalized readings. If you enjoy this reading, um, even if you want a specific fan fiction reading for yourself, for a specific person, uh, please feel free to email me. I also offer readings on Wixy or Witchy if you're in the know and Etsy. Okay. All of those are in the description box, but if you email me, everything is cheaper Wixie is a little bit more expensive just because it is on like a website and I do have to pay fees for that. And then Etsy is the most expensive because Etsy are crooks. <laughs> um, also, if you enjoy this channel and you would like to support us or donate a deck um, or anything of that sort, my Amazon wish list as well as ways to donate to the channel are down below. Alrighty guys, let's get started with your character. So again, please keep that character in your mind and we're going to figure out what your first date with this person is going to be like. All right. So think of your OC or think about yourself. Think about what you would wear and what kind of mood do you kind of want to go with? 
and hold those in your mind's eye. All right. Pile number one, people. What is their first date with their favorite character or their character of choice going to be like? <laughs> oh, this one's going to be funny. It's going to be so awkward. Holy shit, guys. You're going to have a very painful first date. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is actually hilarious. This was not what I was expecting. Guys, please tell me down below who you picked because I need to know whose personality this connects with. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Let me see here. Will it... Why is it not focusing? Okay, there we go. All right, let's hope it stays. Guys, this guy, okay, this person does not know how to date. This person does not know how to date. Either they've never been on a date before or they just do not know what they're doing. They're so clueless. They are so clueless and they're kind of chaotic, okay? I feel like some of you guys may have picked Loki for this one. I'm just kind of getting that vibe, you know, like they, I think their intentions are pure, but they do not know what they're doing. Um, serendipity in reverse, something happens during the date and it kind of like, it brings conflict in, okay? So there's a possibility that um, maybe you're on a date and maybe a fight breaks out and you guys end up joining or um, you guys have to cut it short because like, oh like maybe somebody has to go on a mission or you know it really depends on the world of course um but some kind of uh conflict breaks out okay so it could even be like maybe a uh, a jealous ex sees you or somebody else that has a crush on this person sees you and they kind of like come up and decide to like um ruin the date a little bit but before that the date was not going that great <laughs> Because this person with message in a bottle and verse, this person does not know how to communicate. They are either so shy or they're painfully awkward about it. So during this date, they're not even like really asking you about yourself or asking you how your day was or you guys aren't really chit-chatting because like this person does not know what to say. They are so awkward. And then we have Treasure Island in reverse here. Um, so I do feel like this is a date that either it seems like it's not really going anywhere. Like it's just really painful <laughs> or this person did not bring it enough money for the date. Um, maybe they didn't bring enough money and then like an issue occurred or something like that. But I, I, th I don't think it's going to be like painful in a bad way or like, um, cause again, I think they have good intentions. So I think it's going to be like one of those things where it's like, oh my God, everything went wrong, but it's also kind of like hilarious that everything was just going so badly. All right. Especially with to the scene reverse, this person is so lost. They do not know how to go on a date. They don't know how to court you. They don't know how to date you, even if they want to. And so what they did is they tried to just like come up with like, they did try, they did try. Okay. They try to come up with what they thought would be best, what they thought would be fun. But whatever they decided to come up with is not very exciting and it's not very traditional, right? Um, so like, <laughs> like the cringiest date you can think of with this person is what's going to happen. And this person with fork in the road in reverse, it like even though they tried and they tried to come up with like a date they thought was a good idea, they didn't sit there and think about options, right? So the first thing that popped into their head, they were like, okay, I'm going to bring that person there. I'm going to do that with this person. And they didn't think, they didn't think it through. They were so unprepared that they either like didn't have enough money or they didn't have a reservation or they didn't have time. They are going to try to make it up to you though. Because, like, the whole damn thing is so chaotic. <laughs> and by the time you go home and they give you a little kiss on the cheek and they, like, let you go, 
they're immediately going to be like, oh my fucking God, why did I do that? Why did I allow this to happen? No, no, no. I ruined it. <laughs> like That was so bad. Like they know. They know the whole entire time. Um, it's like giving what we do in the shadows. You know what I mean? Like it is like the stupidest, goofiest thing that can happen where like it's, it's kind of terrible, but it's so terrible. It's like really funny. Like I can't believe this person even like thought of that. <laughs> Um, so they do realize and they are going to start going the distance and your next date is going to be a lot better if you do give them the chance. And I think one of the reasons for that is because they are fully aware that that date was so bad that you might not ever want to go out with them again. <laughs> so they're kind of like, you know, I know I'm going to have to like stuff it off. I know I'm going to have to do a little more. They're aware. They're aware. Moving on to the Foxfire Oracle. What is your first date with this person like? So I think that after the date, which is chaotic and insane, um, this person walks you home or they walk you to a spot where you guys can just, just, stand there for a while just be with each other for a while because you guys need to get away from everything and everyone and that moment is going to be really good it's going to be really sweet it's going to be really magical they might even kiss you during that moment and it's just going to be like a a, a breath of relief like oh finally that's over but like you know we can still spend time with each other and it's like almost a comfortable silence after that because after all of this, you both are kind of tired. <laughs> you both are kind of over it. Um, but you, you're not quite ready yet to like separate from each other. So they might walk you home very, very slowly, or, um, they might stall to spend some more time with you because again, like it's going to be in the back of this person's head, the back of this character's head, like, okay, there's a possibility that this person's not going to want to go out with me again. So I just want to savor these last few moments. And I think those last few moments are actually the saving grace. Because some of you, like, I do feel like some of you guys during that time, like, you're finally going to be able to have, like, an actual conversation, right? Like, you're finally going to actually be able to talk with this person instead of, like, you know, this person being too awkward. Um... Because I do think this person did struggle throughout the date. By the end of the date, like, they realize they fucked up. They realize this is their only chance. And you guys are finally, with Call Forth the Waves, are able to connect with this person on a more emotional level. So it's going to end very cute. It's going to end very sweet, very wholesome. I really like that. And you guys are going to get to know each other a little bit more here, okay? And I do feel like maybe this person apologizes a lot. Um, maybe they're visibly upset because we do have a lot of water here now, right? We have snow. We have the ocean twice. Call forth the waves is calling forth emotions. And then, of course, beneath the surface are emotions that you're hiding. Um, so I do feel like by the end of the day, you'll realize that this person, like, they're kind of upset. Everything kind of fell through. Uh, they wanted things to be better. This obviously was not intentional. They realized that it's their fault, that they fucked up. And, um, you know, I think they're going to also confess a little something to you, okay? So there is a possibility of a confession here as well, right? Um, let me pull for Tarot now instead of Oracle. Ooh, okay, one at a time, please. How does their date with their person go? Wow, guys, wow. It ends extremely emotional, so I'm not sure what happens. Maybe you start getting upset. Maybe they get, start getting upset. Maybe both of you start getting upset over something. But emotions are going to be running really, really high after this day, right? We have a lot of water here, and then we have the moon. 
a lot of emotions here. Like, I do think you both have really strong feelings for each other, especially this person. I think they have really strong feelings for you, but like, they don't know how to express themselves. And with the Queen of Cups in reverse, there's a possibility that this could be you, right? This could be um, where they think that like, you don't have feelings for them the way they have feelings for you. For some of you, though, this is like a completely different person, right? The Queen of Cups in Reverse is maybe a mother or an ex or um, a feminine, feminine figure in their life that has kind of expressed their dislike towards you, have tried to stop your relationship with them, or has kind of like destroyed their idea of what love is or should be. So there's definitely hurt here. This could also be on your side as well, right? Like a feminine figure that kind of ruins something. That kind of is trying to either shut down this relationship or something that has happened with a feminine figure that is kind of like... Is like kind of influencing this relationship, right? And because of that, there's a lot of unbalance here during this date. There's so much unbalance. There's so much like unchecked energy here. But what's really awesome about this is we have the Ace of Cups. So it's really great from going from here, like being emotional because of a woman, right? Either um, maybe you think they don't return your affections. They think you don't return their affections. I try to flip those and now I can't remember if I did or not. So I'm sorry if I just repeated the same exact thing, like freaking ADHD moment. Um, or, you know, there was, uh, maybe another woman in the past, an ex or a friend, or maybe like a mother, maybe they lost their mother tragically and, oh, they just cannot fall in love because what if that happens to their wife, you know? Um, it's going to be different for characters, so please pick whatever applies. Let's say, like, for Thranduil, right? Um, he lost his wife in battle, so it might be really hard for him to want to be with another person. Um, and that is, like, being, like, the sole reason this date is absolutely chaotic here with justice in reverse. Like, nothing is working out. Nothing is going to plan. But ha going through this whole entire sequence and ending at the Ace of Cups is awesome because at the end of this, you guys are going to be able to come to an understanding like, okay, I understand that this is happening. Here are my feelings. Um, you both are going to confess your feelings. You guys are going to talk things out. And by the end of this date, you guys are actually going to feel really, really good. You guys are going to feel really, really happy. And you guys are going to feel really excited for the future. So that's really awesome. Um, let me see if there's anything else here for pile number one people and their date, first date with their person. This date was not the best. But it's going to be one of those that are going to inspire you both to figure out how to be with each other in a way that's going to make both of you comfortable and in a way that's going to work. Here with the Ace of Swords, like you guys are going to have many ideas, new ideas about how this relationship can proceed. How can things be better? So if you're wondering if this date ends up successful, if you're wondering if you guys end up together, the answer is yes. I do believe that. I do believe that you guys are going to end up coming together. Also with the Ace of Swords here, that if, if this person had to fight someone or if you had to fight someone during this date, especially with a sword, you would win. <laughs> you would win. Um, so there, you know, there might be a little bit of action going on, not in the, like a steamy way, unfortunately. Right. Um, but this is going to definitely be the date of a lifetime. So guys, please let me know down below who you picked and what you think your plot would be using these cards. Like, what do you think the date would be like? What do you think they, would they mess up? Where would they take you? What would they do? How do you think they would feel? Um, and who do you think this woman is, right? Who do you think is this person that might be causing a bit of a rift, okay? Or maybe this miscommunication if this person thinks it's you or if you think it's that person. Write your 
fan fictions down below because guys, I'm here to read them and I know everybody else wants to read everyone else's, right? We're here for it, right? We're here for it. Uh, so please, please feel free to share. And again, I just want to remind you guys that I do offer personal fan fiction readings as well. I can tap into your energy with your character's energy and I can give you guys a more specific, um, you know, life and things like that, especially if you're interested in reality shifting. I'm not here to discuss whether we think it's real or not, right? Um, I just want to do things that are going to be fun for you guys. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and feel free to comment. If you enjoyed something, please share it with a friend. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe and hit that bell notification. I try to put up new videos every single week. Feel free to join or our discord server. And yeah, that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much for watching. Bye bye. Alrighty guys. So whoever picked pile number two, which is the sunflower or the fluorite, there we go. <laughs> this video is for you. Um, so real quick, before we get started, I do want to remind everyone that I do offer personalized readings. If you would like your own tarot fan fiction written about your own specific character, if you want to know your story with them, if you guys would get married, how you guys would meet, so on and so forth, please feel free to email me. My email is down in the description box below. You are also welcome to purchase a reading through Etsy or Wixi. Um, so email readings are the cheapest. Wixi is the second most expensive and Etsy is the absolute most expensive because Etsy is stealing money from small creators. <laughs> so, um, but feel free to reach out because I would love to do something for you guys. Let's see here, which deck do I want to pick today? I have multiple to choose from. Um, so what is your first date with this person going to look like? For pile number two people. All right, guys, so what I want you to do is I want you to visualize this person. Keep visualizing them, visualizing your character. And just like imagine yourself or your OC and what you would wear on this date and just kind of sit in those feelings for a moment. Oh, I just noticed, actually, I don't know if you guys can see, but I just noticed there's a little rainbow in this rock. I've never noticed that before. It's probably kind of hard to see on camera, but um, the sun just hit it just right and I was like, whoa, <laughs> I had this little crystal for like a year or a, maybe two years and I never noticed that. Um, alrighty, anyway. <laughs> I got a little distracted there. Sorry, ADHD brain. Um, all right, your first date with this person, you know, this character. Sorry if you can hear the school bus coming through. I have the window open. What is their first date with this character going to be like? Ooh. Okay, we're off to a very, very strong, very awesome start. with this character like <gasps> are you fucking kidding me Ugh. Uh, okay um sorry guys there was a spider <laughs> a spider fell on me and i fucking hate spiders um all right where was i How is this date going to go? Oh, there we go. I will move the camera down in a second. Right, this date is kind of complicated. Scooch this one down a little bit. 
I hope the camera does not fall. <laughs> oh, if it does. All right, I will also hold up the cards on the bottom as I go through them. This date is complicated, guys, all right? So you guys really cannot figure out if you like each other or not for some reason. With chaos and conflict in reverse, this is a really good card to have here because it shows that you guys are having fun for the first time in a very long time, all right? So like, um, actually, if we connect all three of these cards together, right? We have chaos and conflict in reverse, we have peace, and then we have mending in reverse. So what this is talking about is like, you know, there has been some sort of conflict. So it could be like some kind of war, some kind of battle, um, or something really terrible or traumatizing that one of you or both of you had gone through before you guys went on this date. Um, and like, um, it's like the chaos and conflict is finally receding. It's finally going back to normal. It's finally kind of going away. And you guys are feeling like really peaceful on this date here, okay? So it's going to feel very relieving. Um, but we have mending in reverse here, which is talking about how maybe somebody is still hurt or it could be hurt physically or emotionally or maybe somebody is still a little traumatized. So it's not going to fix everything. It's not going to fix everything, but uh, it is going to feel refreshing here, especially with a leg up. It's feeling like you guys are like reconnecting or you guys are becoming uh, closer together. You guys are like helping each other through this time. Um, but we have a higher power in reverse here with flexible in reverse, which means even though that you guys are feeling this way and you guys are feeling better, um, one of you are, or one of you is still feeling kind of either combative or like unsure. Somebody doesn't know what to make of this connection still. So when it comes to this, it seems like some, like one of you, it could be them, it could be you, one of you are, is like trying to control like the setting, right? To like feel more comfortable or, or they're like trying to control the situation. So somebody might be like taking control of the whole entire date, the whole entire time. And it can get a little uncomfortable here with why in reverse. Um, but even though it's uncomfortable, like the other person doesn't question it. Like they kind of understand what's happening right now. But um, through this, like through the way either they act or you act, that's how you guys are going to figure out whether or not you want to move forward with Fork in the Road here. So let's see how you guys are feeling or maybe what you guys decide to do. Because so far this seems like it's going to be a very controlled environment. Maybe it's something like really simple like just going out to dinner or something. Let's see here. The two of wands. You guys just do this for funsies. You guys just don't do it because you see a future with each other. You guys go for it because you need the break. You need the attention from each other. And you, you guys just need time to be with each other, okay? So it could just be like maybe just hanging out with each other or going for a picnic or something like that. I don't think it's like super big or super romantic here. Uh, maybe there's art involved where um, maybe they paint you or you paint them or like um, maybe someone wants to sculpt the other one or create art together. But the reason why it's not so romantic is because we have the Three of Swords here. So there is a sense of like feeling like all hope is lost or feeling too hurt to love or something like that. Maybe they've lost their previous lover or maybe they have a really hard time accepting love, especially here with the Four of Cups. So the Four of Cups here is kind of showing where like, I do think they understand that you're romantically interested in them, but they don't, they just kind of want to ignore it on purpose. Like they don't feel ready yet, even though you guys are going on this date, they're not ready yet to face whatever this is because they're afraid that you're either going to die or you're going to leave them. And 
we have the Ace of Wands. So I do think by the end of this day, um, that your person is going to feel so much more passion. And with the Ace of Wands here, right, we have new passion, new ideas here. So I do think that they're going to start thinking like, you know, I kind of didn't want this. Um, I wasn't really interested. I'm kind of scared. I'm feeling kind of vulnerable, but like this person, you know, I actually really enjoy being around them and maybe there's something here. So it's definitely going to in evolve into something of that sort. And with the Page of Pentacles, I do feel like they are going to offer you something, okay? So they might want to be closer to you, but they might not want to admit it. And so they might offer you like um, a job to work for them or some kind of position where they can like kind of keep you close and keep an eye on you but without like being like ah well i'm doing this because <sighs> i'm so sorry for the beeping um <sighs> now i lost my train of thought you know instead of uh, thinking like oh i'm doing this because i have feelings for this person they're like okay well they work for me they work around me they're always around me um they're trying to find excuses to keep you around them um, so therefore I, you know, I have to keep my eye on them. You know, I have to protect them because they're a part of like my company or whatever. <laughs> um, but it, it is going to be a very unbalanced time because this person cannot make up their mind whether they want to be with you or not, whether they love you or not. However, with seven of pinnacles, there is a huge chance here that uh, you guys will slowly grow your relationship, okay? So this person is going to take time, even after your first date. It's going to take a lot of time for them to realize, like, oh, I want to be with them, or, like, to admit they have feelings, or to even realize this person might not even know this is your first date, and then once you guys get together, you could be like, oh, remember our first date? And they would be like, what? I didn't, I didn't know it was our first date. <laughs> Something a little silly like that. But let's see how they feel. So how, what are the feelings during this time? All right, what are their feelings at the time? Yeah, they just feel very out of control of their emotions. They feel like it's just too much. And they're kind of overwhelmed at the thought of a new beginning with you, okay? So, like, even if they are kind of oblivious to what's going on, especially if it's your first date and they don't really know, <laughs> they have an idea. They have an idea, all right? And they just want to ignore it um, because it's scary. And they're afraid that if they let their guard down, something bad is going to happen. That's why they're not showing themselves as so passionate. They might be a little cold um, or like not necessarily cold, but they might be a little removed during this time as well. Um, but they do feel the spark too here with the Two of Cups. They do feel like there is a possibility for something. There is a possibility you both can be together. It's just extremely, extremely hard for this person to let their guard down to be around you, okay? Um, so I do think your date is going to be very wholesome. I do think it's going to be very sweet. And I do think they are going to kind of like maybe let you see into their life a little bit more or... Um, they might admit some things to you and then they immediately might be like, oh fuck, I fucked up. Like I shouldn't have let my guard down. <laughs> uh, and then it just gets a little awkward. I do feel like it's going to be something like that. But it is going to make them realize at the same time, like you don't really judge them for certain things. You don't expect certain things from them. You don't expect them to act a certain way or feel a certain way. You just take them as they are. And that's going to help them realize like, maybe I can let my guard down. Maybe I can allow my walls to come down and I can, um, you know, be with this person. We have don't let pride get in your way, which is definitely what this person is going to be doing. Um, they are a very prideful person and it, it, they're only prideful because they're scared. 
Like that's basically like the vibe I'm getting. Of course, it's gonna be different per character, so please adjust it as you see fit. Um, but they hide behind their pride because they are scared of something, all right? It could be because they've been through a lot of fighting, a lot of war, a lot of loss here with a fiery climax approaches. They've had something blow up in their face before and it's made them terrified. And they need to realize that they are good enough to have a partner, that things are okay, that, um, that you are a strong person and you will always be able to make it through to the other side if something happens. They just need to surrender to the idea. They need to allow it to happen. They need to um, give up everything that they're holding on to because obviously it's not serving them. It's holding them back more than anything. And what I like about this here is, right, we had the Two of Cups and then surrender to the divine is on top of Two of Cups, okay? So it's saying once they surrender to their feelings towards you, that's when you guys are going to be able to get together. That's when you guys are going to be able to be together. Also, guys, we have all full moons here, right? We had the full moon in Leo. We had the full moon in Aries. We had the full moon in Virgo. And we have the full moon. So, guys, from the time you have your first date, which I do feel like is going to be um, full moon in Leo, it's going to take probably four months for this person to kind of start coming around and letting their guard down okay so it is going to be pretty quick you're not gonna have to wait years for this person um i know months is still kind of irritating right still a little annoying um but this person is going to start coming around pretty pretty quickly right because four months is like in the blink of an eye to an elf right <laughs> it's not really anything at the in the end of the day um you know, before you know it, like it's already in the middle of the year. Um, so it is going to take around four months, I do believe. And they're going to realize around the full moon, okay? Um, some of you guys, especially if your character is like very magical, maybe the full moon has something to do with things. Or maybe you guys have your first date around a full moon or they confess around a full moon. Alrighty guys, I think that is all I have for you today. Please let me know down in the comments who you chose and what do you think what do you think all of this means for you and your character? Um, what kind of date do you see happening? Why do you think your character might act like this? Please write your little fan fiction down below because that's what we're here for, right? We're here to read about everyone's fan fiction and um, to just enjoy everybody's fantasies here. It's really fun and I know I want to read them really badly. So please let me know down in the comments who you chose, what do you think was, is going to happen, and why you think... Um, these cards might apply to that. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, click that bell notification if you haven't already. Feel free to join our witchy discord. And um, again, I do offer personalized readings. All my information is in the description box. I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Alrighty guys, hello, hello, my pile number threes, whoever picked the little clover as well as the citrine, this one is for you. So this is the one I also picked, so fingers crossed it doesn't suck. <laughs> Alrighty, um, so what I want you to do is I want you to keep a, an image of your character in your mind. You can also think about yourself or your OC and maybe even imagine what you might be wearing on that date, okay? I am going to kind of uh, cleanse my energy here a little bit and then I am going to pick a deck. Okay. Wow, this deck is coming out a lot in this reading. All right. All right, so for pile number three people, how is their first date with their person like? How is their first date with their person like? Ooh.
<laughs> yeah, to be expected. To be expected. It's kind of cute though, so far. All right, I know this is kind of cut off and I will show it to you as I go along. Fortunately, my camera does not have a very good range. Oh, I did forget to mention for you guys that I do have personalized um, fictional character readings available. So if you would like to have your own um, based off of like maybe your life there or how your relationship would go, if you guys would ever get married, how you guys would meet, so on and so forth, or how they would feel about you, please feel free to email me because I would love to do that. And last one so far. Okay. Very cute. Very cute. I will adjust this a little bit. It's not going to be perfect, but you know how it is. Okay. All right. So to start off, we do have go the distance in reverse. So I do feel like in the beginning, um, your date is kind of like shy or kind of reluctant almost. Um, like this person, it's not like they don't want to go the distance and be there for you and date you and woo you, but it's sort of like they start off very slow. They start off very weak, not very strong. And we definitely see that because we do have yin in reverse here as well. So the date does not start off with a whole lot of love and <laughs> like the song, whole lot of love. Um, it starts off kind of awkward. It starts off kind of awkward and not awkward in a sense of like they don't know what to do it's awkward in the sense of like they're trying to feel it out like they need to like start getting loose they need to start getting comfortable like they're a little uncomfortable i feel like that's the best way i can put it but as the date progresses here we have why so this is a really good card to have because then this person starts questioning their relationship with you in a very positive way um, especially because we have come to the edge here to clarify that right so come to the edge during this date you start making them feel alive you start making them feel excited you start making them feel like a person again so maybe they've been through a lot maybe they uh, they're not in a position where people really get to know them very well or people can't be very personal with them very well um and so they start realizing like, oh, like maybe I can feel this way around this person, around you. And they start relaxing. And throughout the day, I feel like they do, they do kind of come to the edge a little bit. They do start playing around with you. They do start having fun. Um, so if alcohol is involved, they might get a little loosey-goosey that way. Um, but then they start realizing like throughout the date, like they realize really quickly that you feel like home to them. You feel like they're home. They are so comfortable with you. And they did not see this coming at all because even though the signs were there, they just like didn't see them. They completely ignored the signs. So this is their big realization that like, oh, like I finally found my person. I finally found my new person. Like all of my frustrated feelings can finally be put to rest. I do feel like um, here with Message in a Bottle and then here with Unfinished Symphony, we do have a bottle and we have music, so there might be some drinking going on and there might be some music, maybe some dancing, especially with Come to the Edge. Um, so they might they might have a, a drink to like calm their nerves and then they like, you know, they might think about how beautiful you look or how like stunning or handsome you look and then they might ask you for a dance. But um... Once you realize that they start making an effort, you're going to make more of an effort to make them feel comfortable here with a leg up. You're going to start helping them out a little bit here. In the sense of like um, making things easier for them, you know, like you're not here to 
make them do everything. Like you realize in the beginning that they were kind of uncomfortable, that they're not really sure what to do. They probably haven't done this in a very long time. And, um, you know, so maybe after the first dance, maybe you uh, suggest doing something else, or maybe you, um, suggest getting dessert or, you know, something like you help out in some sort of way here that makes him feel like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, because this is a big realization for them. This is a really big realization for them. And even though they realize this, like, even though they are on cloud nine, even though they feel like they are, like, floating through the stars, it is so big and heavy that it's hard for them to decide what to do next. They ask you to dance, but they don't know where to go from there because I think it's a lot for them. So that's where you step in and that's where you start to help them out. And they definitely feel a lot of relief when it comes to that. They're like, oh, thank goodness. But there's a lot of very um, cool tones and then warm tones here, which is making me think that your... Your date might start out during early to late evening, you know? You guys are going to catch the sunset together. Alright, um, how are you guys feeling through this date? How does this date go? Okay, so your person is very regal, almost, which is actually kind of funny. Okay, I'm going to readjust this now, <laughs> which is actually kind of funny, in my opinion, because I picked Thranduil, and this is the pile I picked. Um, your person definitely has some sort of status, or they have some sort of wisdom, or they're a very old soul, or they're just very important somehow. And because of that, it always affects their love life. It always affects the way they can love. And it stresses them the fuck out. <laughs> Maybe because they're always busy. Maybe because, you know, they're very shut down because of their position. Maybe they're afraid of losing someone else. But yeah, okay, there's a lot of dancing involved here between you guys. A lot of dancing and a lot of drinking. But like being around you and realizing how friendly you are and dancing with you and drinking with you and just having fun with you helps them realize that they can overcome this and that their position doesn't mean that they're not allowed to find love. Yeah, I'm sorry for the beeping in the background. It's very windy today and... Um, we have a door that, that doesn't close all the way all the time, <laughs> so um, that's why you hear the little alarm, so I apologize. But, um, all right, with Ace of Cups here, like, you just rock, the, his, you rock their world. Like, they realize they can have fun with you, they can just, like, be a regular person with you. They don't have to pretend to be this person. They don't have to pretend to be strong or smart. They can be kind of goofy. Um, they don't have to be super mature. And you listen to them very well in a way that makes them feel seen, not in a way that it makes them feel like you're just listening to them because of their position, right? Because of who they are. But with the Seven of Cups, it's like you're, you're opening up new possibilities for them. Seven of Cups is also kind of funny because uh, this is talking about how it makes them realize that they can be with a person. You make them realize they can be with a person, they can be with a lover. <laughs> However, in their mind, that doesn't necessarily mean you. <laughs> so it could be you in the end. It could be you in the end. But it just makes this person realize that like, oh, I can like have, I like this is an option. I might have a couple more options. And they start letting their guard down here with the King of Swords in reverse. They start letting their guard down. They start allowing themselves to feel these feelings instead of just being stressed out by them or feeling very alone by them. Because they've definitely been hurt in the past here with the Three of Swords in reverse. They've dealt with some shit in the past, right? Like, for example, because I chose Thranduil, um, you know, he lost his wife and he's very mistrustful. Um, you know, his people have been through a lot. So that would make sense. 
Um, and he, he's been, or like your character has been very unwilling to move past certain ideas here with the eight of cups in reverse. Like they've made up their mind about something and that's just how the world works. Like that's the vibe I'm kind of getting. Um, but you're making them realize they don't have to necessarily step away from everything because... You're very secure in your own way. You're very secure in your own right. You know what you want. You're no, you know what you're uh, blah, blah, blah. you know what you're worth. But you also know how to respect boundaries and you know how to respect other people. And this person sees that. You don't threaten these ideas. You, it doesn't mean you have to agree with them. But you don't threaten them. And because of that, they're able to let their guard down. They're able to um, feel a lot better about themselves, a lot better about their love life, a lot better about being with you. And so this is a bit more general than just the first date, right? Like we have a whole entire idea of like a plot line here of them slowly falling in love with you, slowly realizing that like, this is fun. This is acceptable, right? Because I do feel like their status kind of keeps them from this. And they do hate it. They do really hate it. And so at first, when you come around, they might like be annoyed or they might think you're a bit childish or immature. But then they start realizing that like, you're this empress right? You are this like really defined energy. You're very smart. You're very cunning. You're very talented. You're very powerful. But you still just like have fun. You still have fun with life because you understand here with the Ace of Cups that it's important to have your cup overflowing. You need to have balance, right? Like where there's darkness, that, oh my goodness, where there's darkness, there needs to be light. And your person starts realizing that too. So even though they've been in this mindset here with the Three of Swords and the Eight of Cups, both in reverse, they've been hurt. They have decided that things are a certain way and that's been holding them back. You start like... You, you start like crumbling their world almost. Like piece by piece, they are realizing that things don't have to be this way. So what do they do with these feelings in the end here? <laughs> this is a really good card to have. They start moving on. They start rebuilding their ideas of what it means to be happy in love and to have a family with the Ten of Pentacles. Alrighty, um, let's get a couple more cards here. Anything else about this date? Alright, so this date is definitely going to be one of many. It's going to end up very sweet in the end, so there might be some kisses involved. Um, and your date starts really showing you their true self, their true nature, who they really are behind everything that's weighing on their shoulders. Um, and they start realizing that they really have a future with you, or they at least have a future with someone, right? Because we did have the Seven of Cups here. But um, I do think you are going to be a very strong contender here. And after this date, they're going to start pursuing you very, 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 very seriously. <laughs> so let's see here. We do have a couple of new moons here, um, which means that this is definitely going to be more of a new feeling that this person is going to be bringing in, um, which is very cool. And then we have both Taurus and Aries, and these are both kind of like, you know, strong animals, mountain animals, right? Because we have the ox and the ram. Um, so this person is very, very thick headed, right? This person is very, very stubborn. 
Alrighty guys, so I hope that resonated. Please let me know if it did. Please let me know down below who you picked, uh, what you think your story would be using these cards. Please write your little fan fiction down below because we all want to read them, right? <laughs> That's what we're here for. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Please pick the bell notification if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.